And we're live somewhere in the universe. <clears throat> I'm kind of getting warmed up on that. All right. Will it tell me on the YouTubes? I don't know. It should. It should. Refresh. Right Internet is a funny thing here, guys. So you're saying there's a chance. There it is. We're live on YouTubes. All right, live on YouTube. Welcome in, welcome in. Hopefully you're not at work like we are. And then uh, we'll see if we can get Facebook to cooperate on the same thing here. You're, on, you're live on YouTube? Yep. All right. It was showing up on YouTube. Sweet. Our back end's a little off. <clears throat> That's fine as long as it's working. All of all this information Facebook. flying through cyberspace. Yay. Facebook is up? Facebook is up. Okay. I'm not seeing it, but I believe you. All right, welcome in everybody. Uh, we're gonna do a little live. We're gonna we're gonna talk about um, top ten videos for gun talk, on judging from our YouTube channel. So top ten watched videos, and we'll give you a little behind the scenes, tell you about some of that stuff. Um, so it looks like we, everything's live here. Everybody's chiming in. Larry, Steve, Sean on uh, Facebook. Bobby, yeah, Happy New Year. We're almost there. We're almost to the 20s. It's kind of weird. Um, Airshot on YouTube, welcome in, man. All right, so I guess we can get started here. Who wants to win a Sig Sauer P320 pellet gun or BB gun? I think it's a BB gun. Oh. So um, we, we picked from all the winners, and if you comment on this video, um, I don't know. We'll figure out something. You know, we kind of have the Christmas hangover thing. So well, there's, there's a lot of cool swag like this stuff sitting around here. So we'll pick something out and we'll, we'll randomly select a winner. So comment in. You'll be entered to win. Now, from last week, we tallied up all the comments and Michael Leapers? Leaper? Michael Leaper. Michael Leaper with a yeah. Merry Christmas comment won the SIG P320 air gun. It feels like a real gun. So I guess uh, we'll reach out to Michael. We'll see if he wants this thing, if he wants to answer us, and maybe he'll uh, be doing some really sweet dry fire practice at his crib. Um, <laughs> Chad at Boondocks, you're working. All right, awesome. Um, so we're just... Uh, you know, kind of settling in after Christmas, before the new year. A lot of new stuff's going to be happening next week. A lot of new products dropping. And we'll have videos on several of those. We've already filmed with them. They're really cool. You're going to like them. But um, there's somebody missing here today. Is he really missing, though? Yeah. Is he missed? I He's just missing. missing. <laughs> We're not missing him, but KJ's not here. Um, but we, he, you know, he... He has to just be up in everybody's business, I guess. So yeah. he uh, he said, hey, guys, I got something you can put on the video. Uh, he's up in Iowa chasing white-tailed deer, as if he hasn't shot all the white-tailed deer in the world this year. Um, but let's go to his video. We'll see what he's up to. All right. We're here in an undisclosed location in Iowa. I'm with good buddy Thomas Allen, and we've been how many years in the making of this Iowa hunt? This Iowa hunt's been five years. I'm from Iowa, so I've been able to spend a lot of time hunting here, kind of cut my teeth, but Kevin and I have been talking about doing this trip for... Ages. Ages. Uh, for longer than five years. You know, we've known each other 10 or 11 years yeah. now, and so it, <laughs> we've talked about it, but finally drew a tag this year. It's late muzzleloader season, um, and those who know know that there's probably not a better season to kill a giant in Iowa than no late season. No kidding, and we've already saw one. We, we, we did <laughs> see one. In fact, this little area right down here, I don't know if you can see very well, uh, is the backyard to the house that we're staying in, a good friend of mine. Uh, there was a 145 behind this tree down there this morning just after daylight, and, and we were that way <laughs> we were not 10 here. miles. But so we're hunting uh, this week with Thompson Center, uh, the uh, Impact. Impact SB. That's right. Um, so it's a, uh, I mean, breech loader. It's easy to it, do. It's an affordable muzzle loader. I mean, it's less than $300. Yeah. Um, synthetic stock, blue barrel, uh, nothing fancy, but it's a tack driver. We it shot is. him yesterday. I sighted mine in. I live in Alabama now, so I did that down south a few months ago. 
Uh, and it took me a little bit longer. Well, <laughs> it did take me a little bit longer. You got to turn um, the scope the right way. That is accurate. Um, but we're also using Leupold VX3. Uh, the Freedom Scope. The Freedom Scope, which I actually I actually enjoy. Yep, um, it, it's a 3 by 9, nine. Yes, 40 millimeters, so it, it's kind of your standard run-of-the-mill. That's what most people use on their muzzle loaders. Right. Um, and it's a perfect for where we're going to be hunting. So this portion of the state is a big mix of tillable and timber draws. Yeah. You know, we don't have big timbers that we're hunting. In fact, a lot of what we're going to be doing is looking at locations from a distance, trying to see a deer we want to hunt, make a plan, move in and sit on a brush right. timber line. We may set up a tree stand. We may we're doing lay it down all. in grass for all we know. <laughs> we're doing it all. So, But real easy, real uh, easy going this week. It will be here, but make sure you tune in. Uh, Thomas Allen 4. T Thomas Allen for on Instagram, and uh, we'll we'll post some updates as the days yeah. go on. And Gun Talk Media yeah. on Instagram, Facebook, uh, we're going to be sharing some stories there. But you guys follow along, and Ryan, good luck with those two behind the camera there. Yeah, they have some really big whitetail up there, and that's what they're going after. Um, yeah, that Thompson Center muzzleloader is pretty cool. Three hundred bucks or so for a quality muzzleloader. And I was talking with KJ earlier about this. What's cool about that is, for a lot of people, muzzleloader is not the primary season for them. It's just a way to get maybe another tag, uh, get some more time in the woods, um, extend your season, or maybe draw for a tag that you couldn't for a regular rifle season. So, so for a lot of people, do you want to spend a lot of money on something you're only using maybe a few days out of the year? Um, so that's a good solution for you. So we thought, end of the year, let's go through what are, we were kind of wondering, what are the top 10 videos viewed on the Gun Talk YouTube channel? So we pulled it up, and I'm going to pull up my list here so I can kind of follow along. And we're going to go from, from 10 down to 1. Um, just as, this is basically from views. What's funny about YouTube is you put this stuff out there, and it's there kind of like for eternity until you take it down. So our number 10 video is Gunfight at Fishing Camp, First Person Defender, uh, season 2, episode 11. That is about five years ago that that video was posted, and it was still the number 10 watched video on the channel. So even, yeah, th on this year, right? So um, even stuff that's maybe it's older content is still pretty good content, so it's worth looking back. I know we always want to say, what's the new video? What have they posted lately? But it's worth looking back to see what's interesting, um, you know, from a channel that you like. So this was kind of a fun one. We had uh, Joey, one of my buddies, was one of the good guys here. He had not done any training. Now, Jason from Lipsy's, Jason squared away. I would not want to get in a gunfight with him. Uh, he did a really good job, and there wasn't a whole lot we could do to, to mess him up on this one. Um, but two bad guys, two good guys, kind of an interesting scenario. And when Chris runs you through the training on this, it was interesting to show... Um, kind of how you should handle this. And one of the strategies is actually separating. And that's what they did in this one. That was the, uh, the second scenario when they actually did it right. Um, so separating out, so it divides your bad guy's attention, which was a great tactic. Um, number nine video, big handgun launch this year, Springfield Armory Hellcat. We're seeing these guns getting smaller, but holding more ammo. I don't know, they're like defying the, the laws of physics somehow. Um, so this one came out, um, optics ready, and they have an optics ready version, then they have an optics on it version, so a, a red dot on the gun. Um, we shot the gun, gun ran great, um, really enjoyed shooting it. I think anyone who's considering another carry gun, this is a good option for you. As people shoot these red dot guns more and more, they're learning the advantages of it and why they should bother uh, having that on their gun, especially when you're talking about multiple guy, bad guys, having to make longer shots. Those are things that a red dot can really help you out with. So, um, and people like to just, you know, get all fired up about the Hellcat. The number eight video is the Sig Sauer P365 SAS. Actually a segment we did on Guns and Gear, and we did this with Phil Strader, Phil is an excellent shooter. He's a multi-champion, national champion in a lot of different pistol shooting events. So uh, he's, yes, he is a hilarious guy. If you watch our outtakes, Phil shows up on those because he's kind of the honey badger of brand managers, of marketing dudes. He don't care. Uh, but the SAS is, 
is pretty cool. I think it's one of those guns that people like to criticize because it's a really new concept. And uh, the thing is, once you get it in your hands and you shoot a bit, you realize what it's capable of. And it's capable of a lot. Um, I mean, it's not for everything, perhaps, but I don't think that they're trying to say it's for everything. This is a snag-free, easy-to-carry gun that is probably 0 to 20 yards is really a good solution, a good option for you. And uh, if you like the P365, this is a different uh, flavor of that gun. I think there'll be more flavors coming out in 2020. Look for that because we will be broadcasting, doing these lives actually from a Sig Sauer range day um, before SHOT Show. So that's going to be a cool one. All right, this was a fun one to do. Um, this is number seven. Uh, the title of the video is Quietest Silencer in History. So this year I was at SHOT Show and um, I guess it was the guys at Lipsy's said, you got to come by and check out the Hush Puppy Project. They're in our booth. It's a, it's a guy who's just from down the road from us in Baton Rouge, and he has this, they call it the Hush Puppy Project, and it's a silencer. It's also ammo that goes along with it, but the silencer is a different animal. I mean, it's, it has the traditional baffle system, but then it also has wipes, so the wipes make it super duper quiet, and then there's another section, a third section, that you can put um, some sort of medium. I think he uses petroleum jelly in it to make it really, really quiet. And then the final thing that's really different on this is um, they base this around the Smith & Wesson M&P pistol. There's actually a slide lock on it. So it makes the gun a single shot so you don't have the slide going ch -ch 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 -ch, reciprocating. It cuts out that noise and so it makes it just probably is the quietest pistol silencer that you could have um, in that configuration. Subsonic ammo. And the cool part is the history behind it. It all came out of a project in Vietnam that when guys were going into villages needed something really quiet, a lot of times to actually take out the guard dogs or, bear with me, this is a true story, guard geese in these villages. So you, you wanted to be able to take those out before you uh, got to reckon. All right, so um, number six is North American Arms Ranger 2, a t break top mini revolver. For some reason, on our channel, the North American Arms stuff, people just love it. I mean, and they're cool. They're cool little guns. But this was a new gun that they brought out uh, more than a year ago. This, this video is actually almost two years old now. And uh, it's a break top. So if, you, if you're familiar with North American Arms, some of the other ones, you basically had to take the gun apart to load it, unload it. You had to take the revolver out of the gun, like completely out of the gun, take the ammo out one by one by one, load it back up, and then you're good to go. So this is a faster way to do it, and so people were excited about that. Um, next one, attempted child abduction from local playground. This is a new episode of First Person Defender. It got a ton of comments, because there's a lot of second guessing on how this went down and what you would do. Little uh, behind the scenes information for you on some of these. You know, we, were, we actually are trying to put this into a real uh, make this feel real. So we were using some kids that we uh, enlisted and the parents were okay with it. And, but you know, kind of had to coach up the kids and these aren't actors, they're not tactical tacticians. So they did a great job though. Um, the, the lady, there was a lot for her to learn. Um, but this is okay, this is why we do training. It's, we're not trying to make it look like you're gonna do everything perfectly. Look how close she was to the bad guy when she shot and she never moved backwards. So I think that there's a lot of takeaways for her. Bad guy's still up. Oh yeah, I guess I'll shoot him again. Um, man, hindsight is like not 2020, it's 2010 when you look at this stuff. And uh, that was a really interesting one and maybe a frustrating one for the audience because you're, you're, it's one of those you're yelling at the, at the screen, you know, stop, what are you doing? I think uh, that was a fun one. What do you guys think? You guys were there for that. I just remember that we had to wait for the storm to go through because there was oh and god it, lightning. Even then, there was there was um, lightning in the distance the whole time we were doing it. Yeah, there was just storms all around waiting for that, and it was hot. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you thought it was dangerous um, on set. It was dangerous with just the lightning. I mean, it was like <laughs> okay, everybody go to your cars now. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. 
All right, so next one, number four, the dangers of ride sharing. This is actually one um, that is from about a year ago, November 2018, but in 2019, got a ton of views because it's current. It's something where you know you hear about problems with Uber, Lyft, th those kinds of things. So our, our good buddy Caleb here, we did our best to really mess with him. Um, KJ driving him to where he was not supposed to go. Uh, I will say, Caleb did a really good job, uh, his best job of not shooting someone. Um, we tried to really force him into a bad decision, and he did, he did a pretty good job of not doing that. Um, he did not bite at all. No. We were baiting him. We were trying. He was backing up the whole time, get, trying to get out of there. Greg goes after him, and he just wouldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. He, he was so good, he almost ruined the scenario for right, the camera guys. Right, yeah. <clears throat> right, we want you to mess up so we can give you some training. But, uh, but Caleb did a good job. And, and that's the thing. For a lot of people who come on First Person Defender, they're kind of thinking, I'm going to get in a gunfight. I mean, we're we're going to shoot it out. And a lot of times the answer is you're not supposed to shoot it out. You're supposed to try to uh, de-escalate the situation, get away, lock your door, whatever it may be. But it's usually, usually we can make people get into a gunfight and then give them some training and, and maybe sometimes the answer is not to get in a gunfight in the first place. And a lot of them, they come up, they come amped up, ready to get into a gunfight. Right. They're just ready to go. Yeah, they've seen the episodes. They're going, okay, here we go. This is how it's going to go down. Um, okay, active sh shooter in local store. This is another um, one from this season. Now, this is one where there wasn't really an escape route for this person. And... What you don't know in these is sometimes we actually give them parameters, um, boundaries, where we don't want them to leave the scene because we have camera guys, we're trying to control the situation so we can see it all. So this was actually a couple, and uh, they come in and shoot her husband, and she takes off running and uh, has to handle the situation. So this, she, I, you know, she didn't have a ton of experience. She didn't do a bad job for the first go around. Um, but this is another one where there's a lot of comments on this video, a lot of second guessing of what to do there. The thing about this though is every time she shot, she hit. Yeah, I will say From she was floor. she was really accurate. Yeah. Oh, there, Candace is chiming in. Candace is actually on. Cool. Yeah. The, uh, so Candace, there you are again. Yeah, she was. Uh, she made her hits, and they were with with that gun. Uh, from that distance, that's, those are pretty good hits, I gotta say. Um, <laughs> yeah. Caleb knows his stuff. Boyd knows. I'm trying to get you to, to do it wrong. You know, you don't have to do it wrong, but we appreciate it when you do, so we can give you some training. All right, so next one Boyd. Uh, domestic dispute turns deadly. Um, another one from this season. And for me, and I don't know if I've said this before, but <clears throat> for me, this was a. A real strange one because it was uh, it was sad. You know, you had a murder suicide scenario go down, and it felt very real. It felt uh, very emotional, and for the people you know involved in it, that's what we want it to feel. We want it to feel that way. Um, it, this was a definitely a big do you get involved or do you just walk away situation, and. It's, I think it's really easy to look at these, sit in front of your computer and make a judgment call to say, oh, this is, they did it all wrong. But if you're actually sitting there and something goes down, um, you're not sure what you'd do. And I'm not sure what the right answer is sometimes. I mean, I guess running away, surviving the day is not a bad answer, right? But this is another one where people... We're really excited to criticize and critique and all that. There's KJ dropping himself. Um, but, but Boyd did a pretty good job, and then we kind of gave him some... He didn't do a bad job the first go-around, um, but we gave him some, some options. It wasn't like, this is the way, but here is another way that you could handle it if you had to. So number one video of 2019 is a video that we posted in May of 2018, but it had the most views on our channel in 2019. It is the 22 Magnum Mini Revolver. 
Again, North American Arms. I don't know what the deal is here. These are super cool little guns, but YouTube loves this content. Um, we ran through all the different ones, the Pug, the Sheriff, um, and we did the, the new Ranger 2. We did the holster grip one, which was cool. You can fold it in on itself and clip it in. You know, what are these guns good for? Well, super easy to carry, right? But it's only a 22 Magnum. Certainly better than having nothing, for sure. Um, it's, uh, it's also just fun. When you show someone one of these mini revolvers, whether it's someone who's a gun person or just somebody who's not a gun person, they go, wow, how cool is this? So that was the number one video of 2019. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, wow, lots of comments chiming in. Um, thank you guys for watching. What are you guys hoping to see in 2020? Anything good? There's going to be some new stuff dropping. We told you um, the 31st, the 1st, the 3rd, lots of new videos from us. So thanks for watching from Gun Talk. See you guys in 2020.